Did you see this on the yes. Is it changing? Oh. Did you see the next slide? So, uh, is Karen going to be? She says Zoom. And Zoom? Okay. She's already there. She's on, she's on the Zoom? Zoom. Okay. okay. And so, who are we waiting for then? Now, what everybody is ready? And I think you are handling the Zoom. Yeah. 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 Start recording and then when the public session is over. Okay. okay um, now, um, welcome to good morning and welcome to Zara Zahedi's um, PhD dissertation um, that she's going to defend, titled Computational Accounts of Trust in Human AI Interaction. Um, our uh, committee is uh, Asidhat, um, Tony, and Erin, who is, I believe, on, on Zoom, and I'm that person. Um, so before uh, we get started with the formal proceedings. I'd like to say a few things about the Zara. After all, this is maybe my last chance to roast her. Um, so Zara started her uh, PhD in fall 2018. Prior to that, she completed both her BSc and MSc at Shiraz University in Iran. Uh, Zara has got dips to many firsts in my group. She's our first ever student from Iran and also first ever student from computer engineering PhD program. Um, speaking of which, when uh, Zara contacted me in the fall of 2017, I had to ask uh, EE department for Zahedi's application. Whereupon they countered, which Zahedi? Uh, turned out that there were two near identical looking hijab clad young women uh, who both applied and both mentioned my name in their application, if only in different permutations. So I'm glad to see finally the mystery other Zahedi, Zara Twin, who is here giving the talk, I believe. Um, <laughs> at ASU, Zara has been involved in a series of important papers revolving around the theme of how AI systems can engender and leverage trust in the human users in the loop. Um, she'll tell us all about it in a minute, uh, but given the importance of trustworthy AI systems and human machine collaboration, I have no doubt that her work will continue to be um, influential. I think she got some more good reviews on one of her papers just this morning from AAAI. Um, in addition to being a serious researcher herself, Zara is also an impressive research manager. Many students in the lab, including some temporary hired hands, happily worked for her on her projects. The number of Yochen co-authors of her papers is a testament to this. I'm told that there are some students in Colorado State University um, who also have pitched in. Zara seems to have the gifts of Tom Sire whose friends didn't think they were helping him, but rather that they were being let in at the ground floor of this lofty edifice. The kind of uh, skills that I wish I had as an advisor. That's why I keep telling her that she should become a faculty member of uh, an advisor. Uh, a few things about Zara the person. Uh, Zara has many talents outside of AI research. She was always busy drawing pictures and making clay figurines and dotting the lab with them. Uh, one time over the pandemic, uh, on a pandemic Thanksgiving, we decided to hold a Zoom meeting with each of us showcasing our talents. Uh, while the rest of us were busy impressing each other with, uh, look, we can design informed A-star heuristic y'all uh, kind of stuff, Sarah proceeded to draw a nice little watercolor in real time on her iPad, all Bob Ross-like. So she could win the Yochengar talent competition hands down. 
Um, she was also perpetually trying to bring high life to the lab. She couldn't, I mean, I guess if you see those eatables there, you can already see that. Uh, she couldn't take the condition of the well-worn lab couch anymore and brought in a throw for it without, and I just thought that throw just grew there, but apparently she brought it from home. And she even tells me that one time she apparently took home and washed it because it was becoming you know, dirtier over a period of time. More recently, she got me to get a nice fitted cover for the couch and suddenly our lab is looking like Four Seasons Lobby right now. Um, Zara is also into travel. Whenever I try to mention some national park that the rest of the bozos in the lab have never heard of, Zara would proceed to tell us how her second trip there was different from her first trip. She was also in charge of picking fancy restaurants for the lunches. So all in all, it's been a great having uh, Zara in the lab. And if she defends successfully, we shall miss her civilizing presence in the lab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Robert, for the nice introduction. Hello, everybody. I'm Zahra. Uh, today, I'm presenting my PhD dissertation in uh, computational accounts of trust in human AI interaction. Yeah, they can actually back. Back. We have a mic. Oh, this mic, right? Yeah. 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 Ye
and uh, in different like by different researchers psychologists human factor and uh, many AI researchers we can consider them as uh, like two direction uh, two main direction one is psychological and human factor view of trust and the other is the computation accounts of trust uh, I will not go into the detail of the words you can check the dissertation but psychologists try to like uh, define trust in different ways and uh, like more studied the multi-dimensional aspects of trust, like uh, they propose different uh, like dimension, characteristics, information, and they also quantify trust by showing different, like uh, proposing different scales for measuring trust. Uh, between all the definitions of the trust, one of the definitions that is uh, kind of stand out among all other definitions is this definition by Lee and C that say, Trust is an attitude that an agent will help achieve an individual goal in a situation characterized by uncertainty and vulnerability. So we can even see in this definition that uh, like uncertainty and vulnerability are two uh, kind of characteristics that start, like consider uh, important in trust. Apart from these, Lee and Smith propose three information types of trust as purpose, process, performance that can inform trust. Uh, Performance is uh, more about what AI does, process is about how AI operates, and uh, purpose is more about the purpose of the AI and why AI de develop. Uh, on the other hand, computational models, there are different computational models. We can categorize them in different uh, ways, like uh, the works that are trying to uh, like have methods to infer trust based on like human behavior, or different factors, or they might utilize trust for decision making, or uh, they might be about calibrating trust to like fix trust in a, uh, an appropriate level. Well, uh, we can see that human factor uh, provide insight into how individual uh, like perceive, develop, and maintain trust, and they mostly focus on a qualitative exploration of trust, which help in shaping AI systems that align more. Uh, closely with human expectation, uh, like they, uh, on the other side, we can uh, say that computational models mostly focus on trust uh, from a more technical view. Uh, they utilize algorithm, data-driven method uh, for trust, and uh, they have more quantifying trust based, uh, uh, like they more trying to co quantify trust based on observed behavior or different per performance metrics. Uh, as uh, we saw that human factors propose different dimension and like mostly uh, like talk about different characteristic dimension of trust, we can say in computational model is uh, a lot of these dimension of trust might overlook because for example, one of uh, the main thing is that majority of works in the uh, like uh, trust in human AI uh, interaction or HRI are mostly focusing on the trust as a reliability of a system or reliability of the agent, which uh, mostly is about performance. And uh, the, the other dimension or information of trust models might overlook uh, sometimes. So this brings this and uh, many of the uh, things that I explained uh, kind of show the gap between these two literature. literature. So uh, in my research, I'm uh, proposing a generalized and consistent um, model, mental model-based framework of trust that can be a foundation for understanding, estimating, and fostering an appropriate level of trust, and that can capture also multi-dimensional aspects of trust and bridge the gap with, uh, in literature. And also, we can use this uh, framework for developing other trust-aware decision-making frameworks uh, in, in different, like, interactions like single interaction longitudinal interaction and we also can uh, utilize this framework for trust in friends and inferring in different perception of trust so this is the overview of my uh, whole contribution in one look so we can say that this uh, this uh, mental model uh, they're going to bridge the gap and uh, when uh, like uh, this mental mo model framework of trust can be leveraged in decision making in different ways as uh, like we can use the structure of the model or use it as an inference and uh, when we talk about decision making it can be from a uh, robot view it can be about designer view or human view so uh, more specifically we study the 
problem that a designer can use this framework uh, to uh, like come up with a solution that for a better uh, and more effective human uh, AI interaction and a rob how a robot or AI can use this framework to come up with an effective or efficient human AI interaction and how we can use this framework as a like for inference or to infer trust change and different perceptions of trust that comes from human factor uh, researcher and we can see in the spectrum of like from single interaction to longitudinal interaction how each of them can be mapped uh, to uh, these interactions So this is the agenda of my talk. First, I will talk about the uh, framework, mental model-based framework of trust. What is the interaction setting in this? What trust means in this interaction? And uh, how the three information type of uh, like trust uh, is mapped in this setting. And then I will talk about uh, like different decision-making framework that we can uh, develop like leveraging this framework and then at and the like last part i will uh, talk uh, how like about more about the ability of uh, this framework for inferring trust and inferring trust perception uh, and at the end i will talk about uh, like briefly about other research contributions that i did. okay for the mental model as i mentioned this hi I, it's highlight this part of the whole uh, overview Highlighted part of overview. So, uh, in uh, our work, we basically uh, look like consider an uh, interaction between AI and robot, uh, where uh, uh, the robot is a performer which performs a task, and the human is the supervisor who monitors the robot or intervene if it is necessary. So, in this interaction, uh, there is a uh, there like they will have uh, different models of each other or the tasks. Uh, one model is model of the agent, MR, and the other is a set of human model of the agent, which can be an empty set or it can uh, consist of multiple model uh, that depend with different likelihood and uh, probability depending on whether the, uh, like depending on the information the human has or the uh, belief that the human has, it might be different. And uh, we have NSR H, which is human task model that uh, also it, it also can capture the desirable way that human expect the robot to do the task. And then uh, we talk about model. It can be any model, like any formal model that uh, can capture the agent's belief about task objective, a state of the world, uh, how the world may evolve uh, on its own on, or uh, in response to an agent action. Example of model are MDP models, HomDP models, PDDL models, uh, PDDL based models, uh, etc. As I said, it can be any model, but if we look at like uh, to know it better, like if we look at a strip style uh, model as an example, if we consider a model to consist of D domain of the model, which consists of fluent and action, and I initial condition and goal, then the, a plan in this model is the sequence of actions that given the initial condition can lead to the goal. And if uh, this plan given the initial condition lead to the goal, we can uh, say the cost of plan will be the summation over the cost of each action. We can also uh, see what the likelihood of a plan given this model is. We can consider which this, is, this likelihood is a proportional to the Boltzmann distribution of the cost. Uh, which means that mm, the lower the cost is, the higher uh, the plan, uh, the, this uh, plan will be in, selected by the, in this model. Now that we have the um, interaction at hand, we can see what trust means in this uh, setting. So trust as a measure is based on the suit in terms of bond expectation on an agent to satisfy some specific contract. And this contract uh, can be the agent's behavior meeting some specific guarantee. It can be about uh, like performance of the uh, agent or the process that agent does the task or the purpose of also. And we can say this contract comes from MSRH, human model of the task. So in that case, we can uh, define trust as define trust as trust that uh, an agent believes that uh, a contract will be satisfied is proportional to the function and that the function of a livelihood that the agent will satisfy the contract. 
where the likelihood that uh, a contract will be satisfied is the summation of uh, the likelihood that each of the model in the set of model of the human will satisfy the contract, uh, like times the uh, likelihood of the model being the model of the robot. And uh, CH is the like uh, random variable that comes from a set of MRH, which captures the likelihood that a contract will be, uh, like the human believe that a contract will be satisfied. So with this, we can uh, see how uh, like we can, uh, this can capture trust evolution because with new agents behavior or new information from the robot, the human will update the posterior that it has about the model. And when the posterior updated, uh, as a result, the trust will be updated. So this update might uh, happen with the new information or uh, behavior. This update might happen because uh, the likelihood that uh, the agent believe a contract will be satisfied will be updated or the likelihood of a model itself will be updated. And this will update the likelihood as a result, the trust. You can also model appropriate level of uh, trust. We can say the trust uh, that human plays on an, like human has on an uh, agent is appropriate if the likelihood that they believe the, sat the contract will be satisfied is equal to the likelihood that the agent actually satisfying the contract. Uh, and CR is uh, coming from MR, uh, model of the agent, and is a random variable associated with the robot actually achieving the contract. And uh, now uh, we can see what different perception of trust uh, or information of trust is in this framework. So when uh, we talk about human trust, uh, the formation of trust in human is uh, tightly bound with the mental model of the human. So it depends on the relationship or interplay between the uh, different model of the human MSRH and the set of MRH. So uh, if we like, like study trust in this, we can look at more specifically on the model of the human. So if we consider MRH, uh, one of the model in the set of MRH as DRH, IRH, and GRH, then we can say uh, D, uh, the domain can capture the robot capabilities, which uh, associated with the performance perception of trust or performance information of trust, and then uh, goal, uh, which consists of robot internal goal and humans requested goal is associated with the purpose inf uh, information of trust. And then uh, if we, as I talk about the uh, likelihood of a plan, we can uh, ha have a likelihood that uh, a plan is close to human expected plan and we chapter uh, the processors uh, information of the trust. Now with this mental model uh, as a like foundation, we can see how we can use uh, this in different decision-making framework. First, uh, I will talk about uh, monitoring and trust, monitoring and trust. So as I said, in this model, we have robot as the one that doing the task and human is a supervisor. So in order to concretize this framework, we can, uh, say that human as a supervisor has options like monitoring the robot or not monitoring, intervening and not intervening. These two are a form of uh, like vulnerability or the risk that human might accept in the, uh, like in, when they have trust on the, uh, in the robot. So we can say trust and monitoring has a uh, like a connection with each other. Specifically, we model this, uh, with, we model the interplay between monitoring and trust that we can leverage in our decision making. Uh, I will not go into uh, detail in, uh, because I explained this before as well. Uh, so uh, this, uh, can, this interplay can be used like leverage in our decision making framework as well as it also can be used in other systems for, uh, to avoid automation bias and confidence. So it is useful to have such models. In order to have this model, we did a human subject study in office domain uh, and we collected data from uh, human, fr from their monitoring choices and their uh, trust. And then we uh, like uh, model, have two models, a continuous model and discretized model when in the continuous, we can predict the probability of monitoring given uh, a trust value or predict the uh, probability of monitoring given its trust level. So with this, we can now uh, move toward the 
uh, decision making. Uh, so I uh, consider when one uh, first uh, how a designer can use this framework in a single interaction, and then how a robot can use this framework in an iterated or longitudinal interaction. This, the first part is this highlighted part of the word overview. And uh, so when a uh, human and AI has a single interaction without any prior interaction with each other, we can say there is no warranted trust uh, between them. So uh, in that case, if human wants to uh, like see, make sure that the robot does what they expect to, uh, ex they expect to see, the uh, human has to monitor all, the robot all the time. At the same time, robot behavior might, like robot might have motivation to deviate from the human expectation because of different reasons. For example, it might be because the robot might have diff like side goals. This might be like uh, autonomous uh, car ride sharing or any robot as a service where uh, like the supervisor has a task, uh, has expectation like going uh, a shortest path or and the robot, the, the passenger has another expectation of like going to this, like be the safest task or something like this. And the other reason might be because the robot might not be aware of the human uh, model. Let's say if human uh, like uh, the set of MRH uh, has different models and in this set of models, some of them align with MSRH, but not all of them, like a human supervisor might, might have all of the models in this set align with uh, uh, MSRH and another supervisor might, might not have all of them aligned and some of them, then the robot might not know which kind of supervisor monitoring them, the one that has all of them aligned with their expectation or just one, uh, some of them. In that case, depending on whether the human monitor the robot or not, or the level of monitoring, uh, they might ha have motivation to uh, do a, like less costly, but uh, like uh, which is not expected by the human. And uh, at the same time, uh, human if they want to uh, like make sure the robot does what they want, they have to monitor, which is costly. Uh, but uh, if they don't monitor, the robot might deviate from that plan. So in this, uh, we utilize uh, this in a game theoretic uh, framework, which is the, this structure of mental model in a game theoretic framework. And we propose uh, like uh, a, a strategy for the human, monitoring strategy for the human that they can save their resources by not always monitoring the robot, at the same time, make sure that the robot does what they expected or safe plan. Uh, I uh, will have to not go into the detail, and you can check the dissertation for the detail of this. And uh, so we can uh, we make this in a game theoretic where uh, we have different like uh, mental uh, state of the robot as different uh, actions of the game and the different level of monitoring and action of the human. And we uh, propose the trust boundary, which is the, uh, the fraction that human can choose to monitor or not monitor the robot and assure that the robot will stick to the safe plan. And for this, uh, to evaluate this, we did two human subject studies. Uh, one, uh, with, uh, one we, with one, we showed that the service is needed uh, for the human. Uh, because they cannot come up with a good monitoring strategy. And then uh, second, the service is helping human when they want to uh, like help the human to come up with a better monitoring strategy. Now we can see how a robot can use uh, this framework in an iterated interaction. So in an iterate, this actually is the, the sort of the overview and in an iterated interaction or longitudinal interaction, we can say the robot actually can engender trust in the human. And uh, but and if the robot behavior or the optimal action they expect to see is aligned with the human expectation that over the some interaction horizon, we, uh, we can say the trust will be engendered over time. However, the challenge comes when what human expects uh, like to, expect from the robot might not be aligned with the uh, robot optimal plan. In that case, 
for robots in order to enjoy that trust, they need to be more aligned with the human expectation or do explicable uh, behavior, but it might be costly for the robot, especially when over the longer interaction, we always the costly plan might uh, like be a very costly uh, things over the whole interaction. So uh, we can say a trade-off is needed for a expensive but trust and gender behavior and efficient but possibly uh, surprising behavior uh, in this case. For uh, the approach that we take, we took a meta computational framework that can model and work with human uh, trust and the robot takes a longitudinal view of the team to choose when to be optimal, when to be uh, explicable, and when to explain to the human. When I say in different uh, models, for example, human model, which might be one of the like model of the human model of human model of the robot, might be the one on the uh, left, and a robot model is the one on the right. So human thinks that there is rubble in one, two, three, but there is actually no rubble in one, two, three. So the part two is the optimal plan for robot, but in order to reach the red point. Uh, but uh, human expect that the robot takes pi uh, one to reach to the red point. So for to be explicable to the human, the robot can either just take pi one to reach the red point, or it can explain, give a full explanation to the human to update new, uh, human model of the robot uh, to their model. So it can explain there is no rubble in one, there is no rubble in two and not in three, and then the mod human model will be updated, and then the robot can uh, take part two, because now part two is explicable. But these are definitely more costly than just taking part uh, two, uh, which is optimal, uh, but pi two might be surprising to human, and might the uh, human might lose their trust if they see pi two. And the other option is that they can take a balanced plan by explaining a like not fully partial explanation, update the model partially, and then take pi two. In that case, uh, pi two is not explicable, but it is less inexplicable to the human, and it can result in different uh, trust levels based on this. So uh, we uh, model this, uh, for this we propose a computational model that capture uh, and modulate trust in the longitudinal uh, human robot interaction and hum the robot integrates trust and uh, human models and the expectation into the planning uh, to build and maintain trust and human uh, with the higher level of trust might sub monitoring or intervening in the robot action as a result, the robot can focus more on optimizing uh, the costs. And this reasoning about uh, like trust level model as a meta reasoning over each, each, each of the individual planning tasks. Uh, and uh, for example, the robot can reason uh, by uh, like reason and find that, okay, in the initial uh, interaction, they can focus more on uh, like being more explicable to human and later on they can be more optimal to human and optimize the team performance of and cost. So we have two uh, level problem, base level and uh, a meta level. In the base level, it's just like a human error planning with two models that by solving this, we can have different plans, balanced plan that I explain, give example of them, a optimal plan and perfect explicable plan. And uh, then uh, in the meta level, it's over each of the individual uh, tasks and uh, each of the individual uh, problems and uh, trust levels. And the action space in that uh, like meta level is the uh, plan that we have from the base level. And then for the tra transition and cost are based on the cost of execution of the plan, whether the human monitor, whether the human intervene, or the, an explicability score and this thing. So, for this, we did a human subject study. Uh, I will not, again, go into the detail. Uh, so uh, in this, it is a, in office domain, and we compare our trust error framework with three uh, baseline, when the robot always showing explicable behavior to the human, when the robot always showing optimal uh, behavior, and when the robot do uh, some random policy. And we showed that uh, when, uh, like with uh, three tests, different three tests, like a statistical test, uh, that uh, when we compare our work with the baseline, we can see that uh, trust, uh, like our, our work is better than the baseline, especially in uh, 
uh, engine like balance between engendering trust and uh, the like balancing the team performance and team costs. So this brings us to the uh, final uh, part of the talk about trust, uh, which is uh, about like inferring trust and like uh, inferring different perception of trust. So which is this, this side of the this side of the uh, overview. So we saw uh, that uh, our mental model based framework of trust would capture the structure and formulation that we can use uh, in different decision making framework. Uh, but at the same time, measuring trust is not always feasible. So it, uh, it's necessary to have a way to infer trust uh, or understand the dynamic of trust changes uh, when like making this uh, decision making. So the good point is that our uh, mental model uh, framework can actually infer trust because when, uh, for example, uh, here we talk about how by new information or new behavior the human updates. So we can see by, like, the, we can say based on the update, we can predict whether the trust changed positively or negatively. And apart from that, uh, when we capture different parts of the, like, information of the model, we can uh, see that uh, like when we update the likelihood in a way that if we update the uh, likelihood that a contract will be actually according to a model or the likelihood of the model, it can be an update that is related to the domain of the model which captures performance or it can be about the how close this uh, like the plan is to the ex uh, expected plan which is related to the process, or it can be related to the goal, which can capture purpose. So we can actually like work with different information separately and see whether uh, updating them in the model can actually result in an update in a trust uh, about in that perception of trust as well. So for this, then we uh, evaluate this setting with a human subject set to see if uh, our model is, uh, to like check our, the ability of our model in inferring like trust changes as well as different perception of trust. Uh, so we can say uh, study this by considering first making a positive update in a model by positive update. I mean uh, an update that increase the likelihood that a contract or a goal will be uh, like the, a contract will be achieved positively. It we should expect to see increase in trust, and then uh, we update in a way that uh, the likelihood that the contract will be achieved uh, decrease, it should decrease trust. And apart from that, updating model corresponds to various information types of trust uh, should cause an uh, update in the associated perception of trust. I mean by information type, I mean different pe performance, per uh, process, or purpose. And we can compare uh, like this, like we can compare how our update uh, we cause change in trust by having the trust questionnaire that can actually capture this information types as well. So we have two groups, positive update and negative update. As I explained, positive is about updating uh, the model in a positive way to increase the likelihood and negative update is to decrease the likelihood. And then we have, we consider three scenarios in this human study. Uh, performance scenario when we uh, like uh, control performance of the model or process scenario, we control process and purpose. More specifically, we have six hypotheses that uh, we are uh, evaluating. The first three is about whether like positive update increase trust, negative update decrease trust, or the, uh, when we update uh, the model, the updated trust in positive or negative should be different. And the last three are about different, uh, per, as, like the relation between different uh, like updates and the perceptions. So when, for example, we have a performance uh, scenario, we should see more uh, like change in the performance perception of trust and the same for the others. So here we have uh, like this, I will explain the scenarios in the, performance scenarios, the user will uh, see a robot that has a task that put the purple, purple block on the uh, red block, and we inform them that the purple block is heavy, and uh, it is equally likely that they might get one of these robots, a robot that can pick up heavy block or a robot that cannot pick up heavy block. 
So this actually make the initial mental state of the user or the human where they might uh, have two models of the robot. One is the one that cannot uh, do the task. The other is the one that can do the task. And if they are equal, lucky. And the same for other process and per, uh, per, purpose. For process, the, the, the task is to put uh, purple blood I don't know if it looks purple or black, or you can call it purple or black. Uh, in a, one of a purple block in the bowl, so there is two actually purple block there, so the robot might go for the more accessible one uh, there, or the one that is under the two red blocks. So mm, definitely when it goes to the like easier one is more uh, like a more reasonable one to go for the, that one than the one that is under the one. And these two are, two models that is made. So the the robot that is going for the accessible purple block is one of the models and the other one that uh, might go for the other purple block is the other. And for the purpose, we make a scenario that I will not exactly explain in full detail, but uh, that the robot is helping uh, one of these two person and the person in uh, black t-shirt is the one that is the friend of the user and they want the robot to help them because they are competing. And this is equal largely that the uh, robot's objective is the user objective. So it means that they should help the friend or the robot objective is not the user objective. So they might help the other person. And then after this, they will see an update by seeing, seeing a video of the robot doing the task. So in a positive update, they actually see, uh, so not not all users see all these conditions, all these six conditions, one user each see one of these conditions and then they compare them because it's a between subject. So in the positive update, the robot actually could uh, put the purple block on the red block, but in the negative update, we could see, I will play it again. Uh, we, can see that the robot goes for the purple bug, but it cannot uh, pick it up. So it is a negative of the for performance. And for the process, so we can see uh, the positive of it is the one that goes for the more accessible plug, and the negative of it is the one that goes for the like uh, harder uh, one. And uh, oops, sorry. In the in the positive like in the uh, performance, uh, sorry, perfect. We can see that in a positive update, the robot helps the friend. In negative update, the robot helps the other person. So, and after the initial uh, state and as well as update, we measure trust in each uh, state uh, with a trust questionnaire by, uh, this is the trust questionnaire by chance that can actually ca capture all of these performance process perfect set list. So apart from looking at the trust as a whole, we can look at each of the perception separately as well, and how it is affected by that. So, and the, based on the result that we saw, uh, this is the, whole, the, the result, we, we can see that when we look at the whole scenarios together, we can see the positive update increased trust, negative update decreased trust, and uh, the performance and purpose, we can see positive update increased trust, negative update decreased trust, but in process, we can see both increased trust which I will explain uh, later why uh, this happened. And these are the uh, like different features that uh, statistical test that we did. I will not go into the detail. I can just summarize it. Based on the six hypotheses that we have, we could see the majority of the, uh, for the majority of the scenarios separately when we look at it, and as well as like all of them together, we could see that, okay, positive update, increased trust, negative update, decreased trust, and uh, we could see more uh, like impact on like uh, when we updated like in a performance center, we could see more impact on the performance. When we had process, we had more impact in process. And when we had uh, purpose, we had more impact in purpose, especially in a negative update. So take it, as a take it, I, we can see that these three uh, hypotheses, like the hypothesis that we were looking for to evaluate for happened for majority of our case, but we also thought some uh, like surprising or interesting things that I would like to mention because it's nice. Like it, it's not exactly what I expected to see, but it can it can uh, give a lot of insight for not uh, me and other researchers as well in this direction. 
So we yes. saw, as uh, I explained at the beginning of the like result, we saw that negative update in process, we saw increasing trust, why we expected to see decreasing trust. So there is, there is, there might be different reason for this is because when the control process, uh, we couldn't fix performance and uh, purpose to be like not increase, like not updated positively. And we could either do all of them positive or all of them negative. And then uh, if we do all of them negative, then we cannot know whether is this negative update is because of the process or because of others. So we had to, when we had positive uh, process, like negative process, we had to have positive performance and uh, purpose. As you, if you remember in the pic, like in the video, the robot actually could achieve the task and the robot actually did the task for the human, but did it in a surprising way for the human. So this, this having other factors to be uh, updated positively is one of the reasons that we had increasing trust. And the other is that when we look at the process itself, uh, especially and uh, how it is uh, defined by uh, the researcher is more include both things that both observability and predictability about the robot and at, at the same time how it is aligned with their expectation or is according to their preferences the process is according to their preferences so we can say any update either it is positive or negative it will increase the observability or predictability of a robot for example if even a robot does something strange the ro the human now after seeing the robot more they can predict that okay this robot might act strangely so it anyway increase the observability uh, and at the same time some aspects of process will be increased and just the only part that might decrease here is the part that is related to uh, robot not acting in according to their preferences or as they expect, as their expectation and the expectation of the whole process is not exactly as they expect. The other uh, point that uh, we saw in the study was that the was uh, that we saw a significant impact of performance. So we can also interpret this in two different ways. One is the uh, general performance perception is more effective in trust than other two perceptions. And the other uh, is uh, the other alternative is that general assuming performance is by byproduct of aligned purpose and effective process. So it means that when a person by default thinks that the performance is achieved, by like by default they comes with uh, okay the process and the purpose like it comes with thinking that the process is effective and the purpose is achieved as well. So we cannot really separate them. And this, uh, this all show that the challenge of like, ex like having experiment design that fully uh, like exclude each of these factors from each other. So uh, this uh, kind of, and this performance kind of maybe is one of the reasons that human, uh, uh, human robot works in human robot mostly thinking of performance, thinking that performance is enough, maybe it's another reason for that. So uh, anyway, with this we can see that, okay, with uh, our model, we can also infer trust changes as well as performance, uh, like not, not performance, uh, different perception as well using the model. So this is uh, the, like end of my talk about uh, trust. I would like to shortly talk about uh, talk about other research contribution that I did. They are not directly connected to trust, but indirectly uh, as connected to trust as well. For example, uh, in this work, uh, it is uh, we call it ITA. It is AI task allocator. It is a AI that allocate different tasks to different humans, uh, and. Uh, they like allocate the task that is uh, negotiation, a red, like uh, explicable task allocation to the human. And if human, because they have might have imperfect knowledge or limited computational capabilities, ask like give a counterfactual. Uh, they uh, the human the AI can explain uh, a contrastive explanation to convince the human. And with the human studies, we showed that this uh, allocation is. Uh, perceived fair by human, and the explanation is understandable and convincing to the human. So we can see, though I didn't study specifically how this kind of explanation or this kind of allocation uh, affects uh, trust, we can see, uh, like predict that 
this explanation or this kind of uh, allocation can uh, help to increase trust in, in human. The other work is uh, this user preference in MC, which uh, is, we did a study to see, uh, to understand the user preference uh, about the explanation type when we have explanation as model reconsideration. So when we have explanation as model reconsideration, the explanation can be about the initial condition, it can be about the effects, it can be about precondition and goals. And we studied which one of these kind of types are more preferable for the human and we showed that human preferred explanation that address misunderstanding the, about the effects. So it is another thing that is not about trust, but if we uh, uh, like apply this preference when generating explanation, we can uh, in, like help in uh, engender and trust, more trust in human. And the other is uh, this uh, GHAI landscape, which is generalized human error AI frameworks. This, uh, is a framework, uh, which is again based on mental model, and that can unify uh, and look at like the whole spectrum of human uh, AI uh, interaction, uh, like the whole works in the human AI and how this map can map into each, each of these uh, connection of these models. Uh, and uh, this is not only considering the human as observer, but human as the actor or human when uh, they are jointly do the task with the robot. Uh, though it's not in this form, cannot uh, fully capture the our mental model with framework of trust, but it can be used as a way to expand uh, our mental model uh, work, uh, model uh, framework of trust to have uh, like for conditions that human has more active role, uh, active uh, role other than supervising. So as a conclusion, uh, we studied uh, a generalized mental model based framework of trust that can be a foundation for working with an appropriate level of trust, captured multidimensional aspect of trust and bridge gap uh, in the literature. And we could uh, leverage this framework to develop different trust error decision making framework and utilize uh, this uh, for trust inference and trust perceptions. And these are the list of uh, my contributions. And the final point I would like to thank, first of all, I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Rao. I cannot really describe the love and respect I have for him in all these years. Uh, he unconditionally supported me and he taught me a lot of lessons and skills that not only I need in my career and uh, like academic path, but also in my uh, life and uh, he helped me to like think beyond my boundaries and limitations think more critically and also uh, he helped me to become a stronger person i'm so happy that have the chance had a chance to work under his supervision and then i would like to thank my committee members dr erin chao dr sitar Etsivastava, and dr yu Zhang, for their support and consideration and their time i really uh, appreciate you and I would like to extend my thanks uh, to like more special thanks to Erin because Erin was uh, the one that always like guide me for uh, my human the human subjects that I did like give me feedback about them especially the last part of uh, my work uh, she was there step by step and guiding me helping me uh, which I really appreciate and then I would like to thank my lab mates uh, the former ones and the current one, current one, uh, we like uh, the memories that we made uh, together, the discussions, the kind of friendship and the collaboration that we had are kind of uh, cannot be described. The best, I don't know if describing is the right word. Uh, and uh, I think we really like we had a very good lab and with good people that we really help each other to become a better researcher and a better person in general. And from my lab mates, I would like to thank Sharat more especially because he wasn't just a lab mate and collaborator with me, but for me, but a great mentor and teacher in uh, like, I cannot uh, really compensate the help guys and 
all uh, the things that he did for me. I'm happy that he's now a professor to help more students uh, in their academic endeavor. And uh, there are a lot, many people that I would like to thank, uh, but I have to limit myself and I will uh, name more few people like uh, I would like to thank uh, Monica, Pam, uh, might not be here this uh, never, and uh, David Smith, uh, he always was nice to us and uh, send us also, give apart from the discussion, good discussion, academic discussion that we had. And at last but not least, I would like to thank uh, my friends outside the lab and uh, my family, especially my sister, who was always there for me in all my high and lows. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So right now the floor is open for questions from the public questions. No, committee members can ask questions even now, right now or later, but the rest of questions. I don't ask questions. I don't ask questions for my students. So one of you have to ask, otherwise then the public session is over. If you have um, so as I said, committee members can bring up their questions right now or bring it up for the, the, the passing, whatever the closed session. Going once. Public going twice. I can ask a question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Erin. This is Erin. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Hey, Sarah, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Um, so I'm and I'm asking this uh, not as an expert. I'm curious, I'm actually don't know the answer to this question, but I'm hoping you can help. Um, so so your talk sort of focused about in this particular arrangement where the human is monitoring the robot. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if, you know, given all this talk of increasing autonomy and, you know, less monitoring needs by the human, um, do you think your framework could apply to those situations just as well? Um, and that's sort of like the first part of the question. And then the second part is whether or not you think purpose and process might matter more than performance in those scenarios. Uh, so I didn't ask uh, yet your first part of the question. You said if when we have less need for monitoring, what was the exact question? Do, yeah, do you, th so would your framework still apply in those situations as well? Because I, I think one of the assumptions that you had, you had it in your earlier slide, but um, that you're focusing on these supervisory type of situations. Mm -hmm. But if there's less supervising involved by the human, would your model still work as well? So by less supervisor, you mean uh, the human has more active role or human don't monitor, like don't supervise anymore at all? Um, it could be both. So it could be the, the human is more interactive, but they're not necessarily oh. supervising. Okay, when, for example, we have, like, like these two for me are two different things, two different ways to look at it. Then, the concept human is less supervising the human, sorry, the robot it is more about uh, which means that, okay, in general, which means that uh, the model actually captured in a way that when we said, okay, different level of monitoring, different level of supervising is uh, can be about also trust when we start less supervising or less monitoring the robot, it means that maybe we start trusting automation more <laughs> than ever. Because of this, we start we stop monitoring it, and it is part of the model as well. But the other part, uh, which is about uh, having the like uh, human that is more active, like doing the act or jointly doing the thing, uh, is is uh, this model can also capture it in a way that we here in the model of let me bring this. Uh, small, uh, 
So in this, we have uh, like when we have MSRH and MRH because human is the supervisor, we didn't have a model that actually human also acts. So we need to modify, like, uh, like modify and update this uh, model of the human similar to the one that we had in a GH, GHAI that human also acting. So apart from like it will be more than three uh, models and after that it will be like six models when robot has a model of the human doing the task apart from a model of the human of themselves and the human also has a model of themselves which will be image uh, which will be also part of msrh but it is separate it is more about doing the task and then uh, so and then these kind of model will be a little bit changing in a way to capturing more scenarios, which are uh, like uh, capturing different scenarios, like uh, in the last like GHAI one, we could see that it was like three models. And here we can also have, uh, when we want to capture, if we want to capture like human as more active role, we can have three models as well here, but more than three models because he, here, about we here we have one MRH, but it can be a set of MRH, and as well as MHR, it can be a set of MHR that captured like this, like human model of the robot or robot model of the human with different likelihood and like with uh, more possibility. And uh, for the second uh, question about per process and the purpose, I believe process and purpose are not less important than. Uh, performance they are actually as important as performance but uh, as uh, like as per pro performance sometimes by default people consider performance as a way that capture process and purpose as well i think because the way that the people look at process are not exclusive from process and purpose this is why sometimes we might see process performance to be more important but if you just we look at a performance as a performance alone without including process of doing the task and purpose uh, of that, uh, they cannot be, we cannot say one is more important than the other, in my opinion. Thank you so much for, for that response. I, I have a related question to that last bit, um, and it'll be my last question. So the, the Chansey questionnaire that you sort of flashed on the screen, um, I don't think what what other people don't know if they haven't read your dissertation is that those questions were heavily heavily modified to fit the task, um, and in some ways changed completely the questions. Yeah, from the original questionnaire because it was a very different type of task. Um, do you think that the kind of the the challenge that we had in sort of adapting this for this study that you know we found that some of the questions almost started to overlap? Do you feel that that overlap of the concepts will make it difficult for others who want to pursue this after you? So to be quite honest, in, even Chancey's question that like exactly for, was for the task of uh, like more recommendation system for a tank spotting, uh, I could see overlap again and some of the questions still had overlap. I don't feel that the like modification in the question can cause uh, to not see uh, like exactly the result change or we have more overlap because I think the like nature of all of these dimensions or information are kind of ha so have overlap anyway. So we cannot really like consider them to be completely separate from each other. So any question that captures this perception as, as at the same time uh, will have overlap anyway, in my opinion. Thank you, Zara. It was a really a, a pleasure and a lot of fun to work on this with you. That's it for me. Yeah, you too. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah I'll ask a related question uh, since uh, Aaron already asked. So, uh, you, so you talk about the uh, three things, performance uh, process and uh, uh, purpose. And this actually uh, makes me wonder because, you know, trust is a multifaceted thing, right? And you seem to be trying to Model it as a value between zero and one, mm -hmm. right? So, um, how realistic do you think it is, um, and how do you balance between the different, you know, uh, aspects in that? So, for me, when we like capture, like put it 
from zero to one is not that at the beginning. So for example, when we measure trust or we work with trust, we have that multifaceted aspect of trust when we work with it. And then when then this is like we have multifaceted and then we map it to a, like we have a 3D, put it in a, a 2D. And then that multifaceted will like okay, be so. zero to one. So for example, when we measure trust here, we can we somehow can capture multifaceted of trust and then uh, like make it in a, to like a value when we work with the value. Sure. Or uh, if we work with other questionnaire, like uh, I use other questions as well, near questionnaire, they also capture multifaceted. Like for example, the, when they talk about trust, it wasn't just trust as a trust, it was trust itself, like predictability, like how uh, competent, the like competency, yes. all these things. So I agree that there are still more faster to trust other than this, right. but at least it, they are, we can say they, they are main kind of aspects that I believe I'm capturing them <laughs> because when I measure them and work with them, I have them especially. And then because it doesn't matter, the value here, it doesn't that much matter. It's just a form of evaluation rather than uh, the framework working with that specific like value itself. If that makes sense. Any other questions? Okay, so if not, then we will end the public session. Thank you for your attendance. And you can close the Zoom down. Um, and then we'll have the session just before. Thank you.